in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Yo, welcome everybody to another brand new episode of Topic Thunder. You're on the Top 10 show. Uh, I am John Roca. Uh, that is Matt Nost, and uh, we are excited to jump into this thing. Matt, how's this work? Uh, basically, uh, patrons submit their topics, ideas, questions, whatever they want us to have discussed, and you go over to patreon.com forward slash the top, uh, the top 10 with the number 10, and you can find the email address there. That's obviously for patrons only, but then we put the show out for everybody to listen to. It's just a COVID relief kind of show. <laughs> was just for them, but now we're out here uh, trying to dance for everybody else. You know what I was thinking about? Did you ever watch Metalocalypse? Oh, say that again? Did you ever watch Metalocalypse? Uh, yeah, Schnepp used to direct some of those episodes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah was one of the biggest. So I got, uh, I got to tell him that. I only spoke to him a handful of times. Yeah. Uh, nice to that and the uh, Venture Brothers. Yes, Venture, that's right. Uh, but he was more so involved in Metalocalypse. But anyway, so for Topic Thunder, in my head, for whatever reason, when you had clicked on that, mm-hmm. I think of a Metalocalypse, a Metalocalypse-like song for Topic Thunder. Topic Thunder. Topic. I love it. There, they can give us a little thrash metal. Allah can put that together. Boom! If you're down with that, but I was like, dude, I love that show and the stupid songs that they come up with. Yeah, fantastic show. But a Patreon uh, show, Topic Thunder, is you guys submit your questions, your ideas, whatever the case is, and we talk about it here. I think I started last time, so why don't you start us off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let me jump on it now. Uh, It is uh, The first one is from Charles Clark. And by the way, I love the idea, Matt. I'm down. So if any of our fans want to send us a Topic Thunder thrash metal song that we can throw onto the show – for this particular show, Topic Thunder, we will do it. Perhaps if we if we like it, we will okay. do it. So, uh, yeah, Charles, we'll let it voice that upon you, and now you're just <laughs> no. I love it. I think it's a brilliant idea. I was yeah. just rocking out to our theme song right now. Uh, Charles Clark uh, sent in uh, the the email here. He said, "Hello, John and Matt. During the lockdown, while I have tried watching new TV shows and movies, I find myself rewatching one of my old favorites, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Wow." I know that show is not the most popular, but I really like it. I was wondering what TV shows or movies you enjoy greatly that you haven't talked about a lot on the show that might be looked down upon. As always, wish you guys the best. Chuck, hashtag Let's Go Mountaineers. Well, a very strong West Virginia contingent on the top 10. So Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Morgan, yeah. I lived in Clarksburg. I don't know where uh, Charles is from, but uh, mm. yeah, let's go with yours. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, do you have any any TV shows that people that you like that people look down upon? Well, that we haven't talked about. I'm not really entirely sure. Like for during this, I have watched some of my favorite Deadwood episodes. Oh but yeah, I, about that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, what show? Like the only shows I go back for: are The Wire, uh, Band of Brothers. Usually yeah. the year. Um, Lost. I do. I go back for uh, Lost. I can't Lost. after that. That finale. Yeah. Just that whole final season, they've been building up that that penultimate season. It was all this science and like, oh, it's a real, actual, answerable question. And then it right. got philosophical, which I'd be fine if that ending, if that's what they've been leading up with. But it was this weird, what are the numbers? What is this? What is this? Mm-hmm. The sub go, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it just ends up like they were in purgatory and be like, OK. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I, I think everybody knows at this point. <laughs> Uh, I think Pushing Daisies would be one for me. Um, I know that it's kind of got a quiet contingent of fans, uh, but it was canceled in its second season. And uh, some people like it. Some people think it's too cute for its own good. But I certainly enjoyed it. I liked Herman's Head. I know a lot of people didn't like Herman's Head, but I enjoyed that as a a TV show. Um, Damn, are there any guilty pleasure TV shows? Like, I don't watch 90210 or Gossip Girl or any of those. I didn't watch Melrose Place or any of that stuff growing up. It wasn't my jam. Um, okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to look some up, see if maybe this guilty pleasure TV shows. I'm trying to do the same thing. There was one about, 
Ah, uh, that's what I think it is right there. Yeah. Yeah, Better Off Ted. Did you ever watch that? Oh, yeah, Better Off Ted. No, I didn't watch that one. It's like it's like two seasons, maybe three max. It's a okay. lot. Of, there's a bunch of great ideas in that, just allowing corporation to run amok type of thing. And uh-huh. the weird sense it makes in their world. Yeah. Uh, that was a good little comedy show. I mean, there's tough that, that's tough to have guilty pleasures that people look down upon because – they're guilty pleasures because enough people watch them that they had multiple seasons. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's, it's kind tough. of tougher in TV. Yeah. And I would I would push back a little bit on the gentleman who sent us the question on uh, Chuck Nine. here. Yeah, because, I mean, Deep Space Nine, there's a lot of defenders of Deep Space Nine. A lot of people who – I liked Deep Space Nine more than Voyager, more than Enterprise. And s- there are some episodes that I think are better than Star Trek Next Generation episodes, some of the best I, episodes. So I've heard some people say – that are avid Star Trek fans. Yeah. Deep Space Nine is the best iteration ever. I'm like, really? Okay, I didn't watch enough. I watched a bunch of Next Generation, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movies. But I never got into the original TV show. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch Voyager. I didn't watch... Was that the Scott Bakula one, or is that not... That's Enterprise. The Scott Bakula one is Enterprise, yeah. Voyager's the okay. one with Kate Mulgrew, where she was the female captain mm-hmm. of the ship, yeah. I tried to get Catherine to watch Picard with me, and she made it through the first episode, and she's like... <laughs> I may eventually go back and rewatch that. I heard it ends well. I liked it. Mance was an, was on the Outlaw Nation show. He absolutely hated it. Not hated it. He just didn't like it. He said it was too violent for Star Trek. So there are some of the older generation Star Trek people, the old-fashioned Star Trek, which I'm a member of, by the way, um, who really have a problem with uh, some of the newer Star Trek stuff. Um, and I, I don't have as much of a problem as they do, but they seem to have an issue with the fact that they're taking Roddenberry's vision and they're making it violent and they're making it, uh, you know, people backstabbing each other and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, the the dream was already changing through the first six original trilogy, I mean, sorry, yes. original series movies, right? Like in the sixth movie, Kirk has to go through hell and back and then admit that he, you know, that he really did want the Klingons dead. So this idea that in the future we're all kumbaya and holding hands, it doesn't exist. It's, it, I don't think it's ever going to exist. It's something to aspire to, certainly. But people nowadays, they don't want aspirational shows. They want honest, real shows. And if you're going to bring back Star Trek, you got to show the reality of what it actually would be like. And Picard is great, Matt. I'll tell you this. Picard is great because it spends the majority of the season kind of undercutting the hero's worship thing around Picard, which I think was gutsy and brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Mance's issue is that it's too violent. But I, I didn't mind the violence, you know? To me, that's the people that were complaining when Superman snapped Zod's neck. It's like, Superman, yeah. Don't do that. Be like, yes. But in this instance, he did it for ostensibly all the right reasons. You're yes. killing someone, but... It's to protect these innocents that, mm-hmm. that and this this is a problem you brought to their doorstep and now they have to die because of it. Yeah, exactly. I, I understand it's a violation. It's like when you see Batman fire a gun, he doesn't do that. But there right. could be a moment in time where it makes sense. They've set it up well, and it's yeah. not like he's walking around wielding a gun. So long as you do, do it, you know, with a real artistic endeavor and merit, yeah. I'm fine with. Plus, Star Trek, the altruism of it gets kind of old. Where are the stakes? If we've elevated to this, you know, egalitarian, the entire universe gets along except for these outlying kind of places, but there's no inner conflict. It's kind of tough to, to continue to watch that over and over again. Yeah, I agree. It is. You just, and that's what was happening when you were watching the TV series. And Mance even said that when he was on, he's like, you, it was the same people writing these series over and over again that by the time you got to Enterprise, they were just rehashing old plot lines from like Next Generation and Voyager and Deep Space Nine. So sure. logically, if you if you put yourself in a box, there's only so many episodes you're going to get out of a box. So mm-hmm. eventually to be successful and to essentially have a renaissance of Star Trek again, you had to change uh, the combination or the parameters of the box yeah. or you had to make the box bigger so that more storylines could exist. So, I mean, people complain, they can complain, but I liked it. Is it, it's Peter Weller, isn't it? Robocop? Yes. It's in Into Darkness. Yes, he's in Into Darkness, yeah. And that's one of the realest Star Trek characters I've ever seen. Yeah. Which is military, uh, you know, a general or an admiral, I guess, in this sense. Right. But his only motivation is superior firepower, superior position, superiority, just across right. the board. Right. Uh, you see that and you're like, yeah, 
Yeah, uh, totally. If, if you leave someone with those natural inclinations, and there's nothing wrong with that, but un- right. unchecked, he's going to he's gonna build things and he's going to get into shit that you aren't exactly happy with. Yeah, exactly. The motivations to him are pure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if it does mean the death of others, it doesn't matter because we need this. And ultimately, that's going to save millions, if not billions of lives if we have this type of technology. It's never going to change, man. It's never going to change. There are oh, just no. always going to be human beings who want it in a certain way. And if that's the only way they see it existing, then you are stuck kind of living that reality with those human beings. So to me, that's what always frustrates me when, when the old fashioned Star Trek people start talking about, oh, it's not about, it doesn't honor Roddenberry's vision. And Roddenberry had that vision in the 60s, man, when people mm-hmm. were starting to believe that, that, you know, we had the civil rights movement, we had the yeah. civil rights Peace act. Peace and love, man. Peace yeah, and love. We thought it was real. and But the honest truth is down the road, uh, as we see now in 2020, we, we've never been even more fractured with the age old issues of racism and social justice and, uh, you know, uh, gender inequality and pay issues like it's all we're 20 to 40, 50, 60 years away from uh, Roddenberry's vision. And look at us in our future. We're repeating all the worst patterns of what had happened before. So what future do well, you think exists? You could be aspirational, but you can also be realistic. And I think that's what Star Trek is doing. The modern Star Trek is doing now. But I think, well, okay. So what's interesting is, so the one thing that Star Trek does, like the whole, you can't talk to a civilization until they get this technology, the hyperdrive technology. Right. The prime directive. Yeah. Yeah. So perhaps that's what the reported UFO cases <laughs> came out last week. Yeah. I saw that. Officially, the CIA declassified or basically just said that video is, is accurate. Yeah. Maybe they've seen us and they're like, listen, they're still yelling at each other about <laughs> the skin tone <laughs> that he has. Like, we can't fucking talk to these assholes yet. They can't even, they don't realize that everybody's <laughs> equal. Wait. It's just no. utterly ridiculous. Do that same. That would be great if someone did analytics on this and was like, we were getting a lot of visits from UFOs in the 80s and 90s when people thought we were turning that corner. And during the Obama years, certainly we were getting, but now over the last few years, like the, the UFO uh, sightings have dropped considerably because they're like, no, oh, these backwards motherfuckers, they still haven't done it yet. They're still d- dealing with the idea of someone's color of skin be like being an issue. <laughs> two years from now, when we get into the Federation's archives and be like, oh man, they were contacting us and all these and the official reports next to it, it's just the... Dude, no, <laughs> no, just right, bold, Italian, <laughs> underlined. It's five times the size of El. <laughs> Still too stupid to contact. Still too stupid to contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen for a long time. Uh, it's probably so. Sadly, probably so true. I just, I can't imagine that any other species is any different because this is all I've ever known. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. You're right. It's fair. You know, the the only construct of your understanding is what you've experienced or what you've seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so how can you conceive of a world where like you'd be suspicious by one of the best lines of the matrix in the, in the sequels, even though sequels aren't that great. He says, we tried, the architect says, we tried to do a version of the matrix where everyone got what they wanted. They were happy and the humans were naturally suspicious. And that just lets you know, see, so no matter how high we, we try to climb or we fly, we're always going to be suspicious at the top level of what can happen and of those below us. You know, that's just how it works. 100%. 100%. You know, so, yeah, it's unfortunate, but true. We hate as much as we love. And it's this weird dichotomy that each one of us carries with us. Yeah. Some and others on the, the spectrum, but we, we all got it. It's, yeah, we, we really do. Be honest with yourself. We all do. Uh, uh, we've gotten to the point, you know, with that type of uh, driving mentality that we're video conferencing. It's <laughs> true. Very true. Very for true. the anyone in the world to listen to. Yeah. And it's weird that we have this ability. So that's you know. <laughs> so that's a positive, I guess. Eh, it's a give and take. It's a give and take. It's the balance of the world. You, it, you get your Einsteins and you get your Alex Joneses. <laughs> <laughs> the spectrum of humanity, you know? Learned, so astute. True. Yes. Interesting. Bit of a philanderer. Sure, sure, sure. Eh, you know. know. Over here, frogs are gay. Yeah, (laughs) over here an understanding of the world and basically a peek into the the blueprint of god's fingerprint so to speak right and then over here 
<laughs> He's ripping his shirt off, yelling at the television exactly. about those actors at the uh, yeah. where those kids were, were sadly killed. Yeah, my, He's Sandy Hook. Yeah, the Sandy Hook actors. My, yeah, my but, favorite tweet ugh. about all of the resurgence because you guys can go back and figure out which day we're recording this on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Twitter uh, was <laughs> I can't remember who it was, uh, but they just tweeted. Uh, I think the scariest or the craziest thing about all this is the fact that Alex Jones is forty six. <laughs> or it's only 46 and i was like holy shit i never thought about that i just assumed he was 54 like yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude okay. carrying carrying around all that hate ages you man it fucking ages you dude you ever seen the before and after when he's supposed to have taken some diet you know metabolism pill no oh it's oh. great because the after is just him with the spray tan and it's <laughs> Pose. He said it's weird. There's no difference whatsoever, but they're passing it off like he's some a tremendous weight gain. Uh, it's just a fucking bad tan. It's like, it changed my life. <laughs> oh, that guy's interesting. Oh, yeah. On so many levels. Mm-hmm. On so many levels. Uh, all right. Thank you, Charles. I think I would throw Sabrina Teenage Witch in there. That's one I get shit for, but I loved oh. that show. And I had a thing for Melissa Joan Hart back then, so I had no problem watching it. So yeah, I don't know like that. <laughs> Any of those, like I, me and my friends, for whatever reason, love Saved by the Bell, but I couldn't watch those if you paid me. Oh yeah, now right. I only watch uh, the summer one. The summer one I'll watch, but no, no other season of Saved by. And they're bringing it back for God's sakes. Yeah, they're all ridiculous. coming back. It's insane. Yeah. All right. The next one is from uh, Nancy Mallory. Okay. And says, "Hi, John and Matt. I hope you guys are doing well under quarantine. This is my first time submitting a question for Topic Thunder, but I've been listening to the show for less than a year. All right. Oh, thank you." I recently rewatched, pardon me, recently watched the classic Schwarzenegger film Last Action Hero. Oh. The kid Danny dreamed of Slater being Hamlet is one of my favorite scenes. Uh, my question is that if you had the magic ticket and you could teleport into any movie, which one would it be and why? Mine would be Inception because it'd be fun to hang out with Cobb and his crew to travel to various dream worlds. Wow. Nancy, Nancy you'd get stuck in one of the, wouldn't you be afraid to get stuck in one of those dream worlds? Like, uh, Watanabe was in that movie. Like you could be lost for century, for decades in a in an alternate uh, dream world and never climb out if they can't get you back out. If it's if it's financially feasible for them to not save you, you might never come out. But I respect you wanting to be in there. Clearly, you're an experimental person, so I respect that. Um, <laughs> if I had the magic ticket that could teleport me into any movie, where would you go? Jesus, that is a great question. I mean, Star Wars would be cool to see that up close. True, true. To be a character out there in Star Wars. You have all the space travel, which I'm into. and You can see all these different distant lands and all that stuff. Uh, Jurassic Park, I would love to see dinosaurs. (laughs) That's all you, bro. That's all you. You wouldn't want to see a fucking dinosaur? Fuck no. Fuck no. Are you kidding? I can't even go to a zoo, Matt. I'm going to go to fucking dinosaurs, man. Please. No. I was thinking about this the other day. Got a lot of time on my hands. (laughs) Yeah, don't we all? (laughs) Shit. And just the idea of like, man, if dinosaurs can see how bad we're dominating them now and their ancestors, like their liquefied bodies run our cars. Oh, yeah. We have chicken farms and turkey farms. And you guys, you guys are only around for our convenience. <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ, just to dominate a species over millennia upon millennia. <laughs> Suck it. Suck it, dinosaurs. <laughs> Suck a T Rex. Well, it's it just, you know, I don't know why that popped in my head and I giggled and then I went about, I was do I was cleaning or some shit. <laughs> it's because you're a science nerd, man. It's there. It's always hanging around uh, in your brain. What, what movies you got? What would you, I, I, I would have to say too? Avengers Endgame. I'd love to be there on the battlefield really? fighting Thanos as one of the uh, Avengers, as one of the superheroes. <laughs> Absolutely. It would be a you blast. Be a no, I've been, no, my purity days uh, are over. There's no way I can hold uh, with what I've done, there's no way I can hold that thing. But I'd love to be one of Strange's, like you know, uh, sorcerers or uh, just one of the Avengers, just one of the Avengers fighting. You know, I'd love to be Hulk or whatever. You know, that would be that would be a blast. So uh, that's where I would probably go, superhero wise. I mean, shit, I'd love to be Batman. To be honest with you, I'd love to be Batman. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet, right? Just to put on the cowl and scare the shit out of people and save people well, from crime. It'd be cool. Okay, but it- and rich. But I don't think necessarily we get to be one of them. We just do experience their world. Now, if you oh, say, okay. sure, I agree. Well, what about just straight experience their world? Their ver- hmm. uh, um, I think it would still say Avengers Endgame, I guess, as a first choice. Okay. How about I hang a- out with Lebowski? 
or maybe <laughs> yeah that's all i couldn't do that and i'd get irritated just hang out with spinal tap nonstop. just watch oh. them. that'd be pretty fun that's fair I just had one. And it was in my head, and then I lost. Oh, uh, being a member of uh, Balboa's entourage. I'd like to be a member of Rocky's entourage, right? Maybe his cousin sure. or one of the trainers who gets to train him and walk him out to the ring. I'd be, love to be uh, one of the dudes in his entourage. That'd be fun yeah, to experience that one. guy's world, right? I'm trying to think of what sports movie then. Like, where would oh, you, man. what game would you want to see? Wouldn't you want to be in the stands for the Hoosiers game, the final game in Hoosiers, maybe? Uh, yes and no. There's got to be a better... I think I'd rather be down in the Venice courts for white oh, with white men can't jump. Right. Uh, pretty, that would be, that looks realer to me. But Woody can play. How whereas are you dealing? You, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, whereas Hoosiers, if you go watch it, like they reuse some of the same footage and Jimmy Chipwood shoots like 95%, legitimately 95%. And it's a little unrealistic. Uh, <laughs> Don't you ruin that movie for me, man. Um, <laughs> What are you doing? How are you handling this? Like, let me ask you a personal question. I'm sending this in with a five dollar contribution. Like, what, what, what did you? How are you dealing with not playing basketball every Saturday, man? I like, hate it. Yeah. What are you doing? Like, are you out in your yard bouncing the ball I mean, or anything? No. Are you sneaking off to courts. I look to see if there are any courts open. I haven't found any around me. All the courts with the basketball hoop are closed. Um, they mean, have them. They have them open down where I used to live. Uh, Lindley and I went for a walk at that park. Oh, what a Point City? Yeah, that Point City park. They have only one person per rim, though. There's no no more yeah. than one person. Oh, but they have. And I legitimately might drive down there to play. To go, shoot. go see, man, because they had cops camp there two weeks ago when we went for a walk in that area, and four different people were playing at four different rims, obviously by themselves, uh, and then people were waiting off the court for whoever was there to be finished so they could use the rim. Uh, so, okay. it, you know, I think it, there are some that are open. It's just uh, uh, they're in public spaces and people are in the cops are yeah. there watching. So, yeah. So I hate Poinsettia. I think it's my least favorite public park. But it's got a hoop. I played, I played in a lot of them. Poinsettia, I, my least favorite. I don't disagree with you, man. Uh, I, I don't like going down there. Uh, the, yeah. the people that attracts, it's not my favorite park to play Boy. in. Yeah, you get the weird transient homeless people that live in Hollywood regardless. Sure, sure. It's a bunch of curmudgeonly old Russian dudes yep. like hanging out on the side watching kids play. It's yeah. fucking strange. Man. It is strange. It is very strange. And then the yeah, young it, kids who play talk way too much trash oh, for their game. Their game is my, not that great. My friend got his car broken into at Poinsettia one. Oh, shit. They were playing basketball and somebody was like, oh, you know, I'll jump on next and was hanging out near you know all, collectively all, everybody's stuff and just right. grabbed some keys out of people's cars and then went out to the park like that closed parking lot and Holy just fuck. found one that opened and jumped in and stole everything out of my uh, friend's car jesus christ yeah so that was already i had stopped going like three years ago this happened like a year and a half ago right 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 all made um, another court that we used to play on in san vicente in west hollywood yeah i'm starting to get antsy though i am starting to get antsy to get out there and do something like I, I got the bike tuned up uh, last week. So I'm going to start riding it more kind of being out there, but you got to get the mask or whatever. I don't know what mask you can buy when you bike ride. They're saying it's okay. As long as you're not near too many people, yeah. you can bike ride and you won't, you won't catch anything. Yeah, um, but like I, I'm getting antsy. Like I want to get out there and play tennis or basketball or uh, go work out or something. And I'm just getting it. Finally, I'm starting to get a little antsy now. Uh, whereas before I, you know, I've been dealing with this since January, to be honest with you. So now we're in what, uh, May now is I'm finally getting a little antsy. I want the freedom to be able to go do that kind of thing. Like the other day I, I was, I literally took the basketball out from my closet. I was like, I'm going to go shoot some hoops for a couple hours, get the rhythm back. Cause it's been a year or two or a year or so since I played. And then Lindley goes, where are you going to do that? And it, I just stopped. I just stopped. I was like, Oh God damn it! I didn't even think about the fact that I can't go on a court, and I'm not going to Point Zedia. So it just, it just hit me like, damn. So yeah, know. yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Um, I know a couple of schools that we you have to hop the fence to get into. Oh really? And they're not like being strict about it. Ten or twelve? No, I I have not been. Okay, I've been kicked off of both of them by cops. They don't. They always like uh, just come up and be like, hey, someone tripped the alarm and. It's this one court that we've been kicked off of three times, four times over the past 10 years. Oh, wow. It's, there's some skateboard kids, and they almost always trip the alarm because we come in and out the same way. Yeah. So every time the cops are like, technically, you have to go. Uh, we've had a couple times where they're just like, let me drive away. 
And then what you guys do after I drive away is what you guys do after I drive away. <laughs> so we have to hop back over the fence, go sit outside for 10 minutes. He gets in his car, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's off and we wait a couple minutes and then we just go right back in. <laughs> is there something in this hand that will make you forget what's in this hand? Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Um, all right. We're at the 25 minute mark. You want to wrap this thing up here? Uh, we'll do one more. Let's do one more. All right. Uh, looks like the next one is a sports question. We've done a few sports questions. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Then I'm fine with wrapping it here then. Yeah. Let's wrap it here. We'll, we'll save those for the next because that's a pretty extensive one. Um, all right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for uh, downloading um, or watching this episode of Topic. I can't thank you all enough for being supporters of the show, especially during this time. Uh, we know you could, you know, use your money for other things, but the fact you're supporting us as we keep going and doing entertainment uh, for you and helping you through this time and making you laugh, maybe taking your mind off of it, it means a lot that you let us do that for you and support us doing it for you uh, with your dollar. So thank you. Yeah, I echo everything that John just said. Um, and we hope that we help you get through these weird times and that you're doing well out there. You're staying safe. If you'd like to join the discussion, once again, it's patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10 and just uh, join us over there. You can find the email address. You can follow me, me anywhere at Matt Nost. Uh, and thank you so much for listening this week. And that's it for me. Right. You can follow me at the Roca says on Twitter and on Instagram. And please come and subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash John Roca says, and come find the outlaw nation on Twitch. That's right. We're on Twitch now as well. So thank you so much. Uh, we will talk to you next time on another brand new episode of Topic Thunder.